My name is Ronald Krutz, R-O-N-A-L-D, Krutz, T-R-U-Z. I am an organizer and an attorney with the Coalition to Defend Affirmative Action, Integration and Immigrant Rights, and Fight for Equality, by any means necessary, BAM. And being, uh, our organization is joined by other organizations, and we are proud, I'm here as a proud attorney for and representative of the interveners, the proposed interveners, which is a coalition of organizations, which include BAM, Berkeley Law Jewish Students for Justice in Palestine, Berkeley Muslim Students Association, and 33 individuals who support and fight for Palestine liberation of this campus and across the world, who demand our right to be interveners in the Brandeis Center versus University of California lawsuits, who demand our right to defend our right to freedom of speech. And this judge, U.S. District Judge James Donato needs to grant our motion for intervention. Judge James Donato needs to grant our motion for intervention because this case is of national importance. The Brandeis Center, the pro-Trump Brandeis Center, is filing lawsuits across the country, including against Harvard University, trying to get a university that in reality agrees with them to do a settlement with them. And we, this case at the University of California needs to be ground zero for the legal battleground on speech on campuses. And admitting us as interveners will make it that because we, the interveners are going to be presenting arguments that the universities and campus and colleges are not providing. They will be the only voice that speaks equally in defense of pro-Palestinian activists and the rights of Jews to freedom of speech and religious freedom and academic freedom. They, by admitting the interveners, we will make this case the one with the most extensive and fulsome record that will be a binding precedent for all the other cases around the country. And for that reason alone, Judge James Donato needs to grant our motion for intervention. He seeks to silence any criticism of the Israeli genocidal conquest of Gaza, West Bank, and East Jerusalem. At the very moment that the world's highest court, the International Court for Justice, has declared that that occupation and invasion are unlawful and that the settlers, their presence is unlawful and that they need to withdraw immediately. And at the same time that they're calling on all UN member states to withdraw support for Israel, their lawsuit seeks to prohibit the free defense and discussion of the International Court of Justice's decision in American law schools and on college campuses and in our society. That is how extreme their lawsuit is. And they're doing this under the false, under the lie. Their lawsuit is based on the central lie that criticism of this present extreme ultra right wing government of Israel is anti Semitic, which it is not. That is a lie. They are trying to get the courts to codify in US law that support of this ultra right wing. Netanyahu regime is the, uh, the defining characteristic of being Jewish. And that is not true. And today there will be, there are Jewish members of the proposed interveners who will say no to that. The Brandeis Center does not speak for them. They seek to silence both non-Jewish and Jewish critics of the Israeli government and the U.S. government, and they will not get away with it. The interveners are the true targets of this lawsuit, not the university, which is the only defendants in the lawsuit right now. It is our free speech rights that are under attack. It is the rights of the Palestinian, Arab, Muslim members of the proposed interveners. They're the ones who will be suffering a racist, hostile environment if Brandeis succeeds at imposing a ban on criticism of genocide of their family members and loved ones in Palestine. It is the Jewish members of the proposed interveners whose rights for religious freedom and their right to define for themselves what it means to be Jewish would be violated if Brandeis succeeds at getting the court to impose a definition on them.
and it is all of the interveners' right, it's our right to criticize the rise of fascism and criticize genocide, both here and abroad, including in Israel, that is under attack. Interveners are, well, the university, which is the current defendants, we have no faith that they will argue in our, argue, make our arguments. They absolutely will not. Because we've already seen that they already are implementing policies that are consistent with the goals of the Brandeis plaintiffs. Berkeley Law Dean Erwin Chemerinsky has already threatened to punish student law journals who express solidarity with their Palestinian classmates and the people of Palestine. Law Dean, Law Dean Chemerinsky has threatened his own students and report, said he would report them to the Student Code of Conduct and co contact the state bar for their speech in support of Palestine. Mm -hmm. We have seen at UCLA the violent repression by the, the UC administration, mm -hmm. a police crackdown in collusion with pro-fascist Zionists against, against the peaceful pro-Palestine encampment. Just last month, July, the regents passed a policy to censor their own faculty criticizing Israel and criticizing the Biden-Harris administration. And just today, UC President Drake has announced a zero tolerance policy against encampments for Palestine that is outrageous and untenable. It is unprecedented for this top-down dictatorial policy like this to, to go forward and it would represent the biggest crackdown on free speech rights since the McCarthy era. Mm. The, the, we have no faith, faith in this university that has made public statements in support, well, okay, on, on, on today's announcement. The, he's also said that he will be prohibiting masks at many protests for Palestine. And we're in the middle of the largest surge of COVID since summer, largest summer surge since the summer of 2021. So in addition to this administration's tacit support for Netanyahu's genocide, he is prepared to add to the death count with this untenable policy. And it shows the desperation of the university administration and the Brandeis plaintiffs whom they agree with that they can't tolerate criticism of the murder of 40,000 people, mostly women and children, the death count will be multiplied by four or fivefold. The conservative estimates say that 8% of the entire population of Gaza will be annihilated already from the current confirmed deaths. Mm. This is a genocide that's going on, and there's no defense of it. That's why they have to repress speech on it. And we're not going to let them silence us. They will not succeed. Our voices will be heard. And that is what the signs say today. That is why we're following this intervention. We refuse to be excluded from this debate about our rights. And we also refuse to allow the Brandeis plaintiffs to twist the story, to try to scapegoat pro-Palestinian activists, Muslims, Arabs, and Palestinians for the rise of anti-Semitism and the rise of attacks on Jews. It is Netanyahu and his policies that and his threat to broaden the war to the Middle East, to other countries, to make this an international war that is dramatically isolating the state of Israel and endangering the lives of Jews in Israel and abroad. And silent, trying to silence and persecute pro-Palestine speech does nothing to combat the rise of anti-Semitism and protect our Jewish sisters and brothers. Yes. So I want, lastly want to say who the interveners are. We are four organizations, 33 individuals, a diverse group of Muslim, Jewish, Arab, Palestinian, people with family in Palestine, people with family in Israel, people of all religious backgrounds and philosophies, people of all races and ethnicities and from different nationalities who stand united and agree with the International Court of Justice that Israel must withdraw from the occupied territories immediately. The genocide must end and that our govern government needs to stop funding the Israeli government's military. So that's my opening, and I'm going to now introduce our three interveners. So good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Adam Lerman. That's A-D-A-M-L-E-R-M-A-N. And I am a proud proposed intervener um, in the Brandeis Center 
lawsuit against the UC. Um, I am extremely proud and excited to be standing up here and to be representing the organizations and individuals who are applying and demanding that we be allowed into this case as full co-defendants with the University of California. The people who are proposed interveners, the people standing behind me um, have been leaders in the movement of, you know, across the Bay Area and other interveners across the country uh, for the last 10 months building the movement for justice in Palestine and to stop the genocide. And so the interveners um, have been outspoken, will continue to be outspoken, and will continue to build this movement. Um, we urge Judge Donato and the court to grant us intervention into this lawsuit because we know that the Brandeis Center is trying to force the UC into a settlement. We know um, that this matter deserves a full hearing and a full trial in court and only us, only the proposed interveners, are prepared to put forward a full slate of witnesses, studies, research, and the truth in the courtroom to make clear, and this is the core of what I want to say, to make clear that being against the genocide, being against the Netanyahu and Biden regimes, does not mean that you are anti-Semitic. If you stand against the genocide, you are not automatically anti-Semitic as these plaintiffs would have us believe. This, um, we are the only ones defending the free speech rights of the pro-Palestinian movement. And for Jews like myself who support the pro-Palestinian movement, we're fighting to stop the UC from continuing to implement things like Ronald mentioned, like what was just announced this morning by UC President Drake. And we also refuse to allow the universities to continue to clamp down and silence and censor our movement. I was at UCLA in April supporting the encampment. I saw with my own eyes Chancellor Block sitting and standing above the encampment at the at Roy, Royce Hall, looking down, doing nothing as an organized mob of fascist and pro-Netanyahu fanatics attacked his own students on his own campus, and he did nothing. Mm. The next day, he did something. He ordered the LAPD to brutally clear that encampment at UCLA arrested hundreds of students, kicked the rest of us off campus who were there supporting the movement. This is the administration that we are to believe is supposed to defend our rights in the courtroom. We understand that won't happen. There is no way that this court cannot allow us into this case. Our voices must be heard. The pro-Trump pro fanatics of the Brandeis Center seek to use the federal courts to shut down our movement in defense of the Palestinian people. The defendants in this case, the UC administration, administration, Berkeley Law School, they agree with the Brandeis Center that our movement must be repressed and silenced. Neither party in this case speaks for us. Mm -hmm. We are the only ones who can speak for ourselves in people and for the defense of our own ability, my own ability as a Jewish American to actually discuss and debate and fight over these issues to decide what it means to be Jewish. We are not going to allow the Brandeis Center or this court tell us what we are supposed to believe, and who we are supposed to be. 40,000 Palestinians, or as Ronald said, much, much more, have been murdered in Gaza thus far in the last 10 months. Yet the Brandeis Center sees that fit to use this lawsuit 
to silence opposition to that genocide. No, no, I, I am one of the millions of Jews who stand proud with the Palestinians for an independent Palestinian nation and for their liberation. I was raised in a Jewish family in and around New York City. And in most American Jewish families, the topic of Israel is brought up early and often. It is something that is constantly part of your upbringing. And for me, it was especially important. My parents um, met in a Zionist youth group in New York City in 1947. And my mother, even though she's about to be 91, she remembers with probably the most joy I've ever seen on her face. She remembers the day in 1948 that she was told that the state of Israel has been founded. That's where I come from. But for me growing up, watching on the news in the late 70s and early 80s, the constant fighting, the constant friction on the streets of Israel made me start to think, what is it that I'm being told to believe here? And I was able to go through a deep process of soul searching, of debate. I got to college and it was constant arguing. It was constant debate. It was going to different group meetings, saying what I thought being a Jew meant, arguing with other Jews, learning from Palestinian classmates and Middle Eastern classmates about what the reality really was and is in the Middle East. And through my college years, finally, by the end, I graduated knowing I was not a Zionist and that I stood for the liberation of the Palestinian people. A messy time. This is, these are not easy things to figure out. But I was lucky enough to have that opportunity. What this lawsuit seeks to do is to stop American Jews from having that same experience that I had. To be able to come to terms with the lies we've been told and to hold up our fists in solidarity with this movement and make clear that we stand for true equality and for true justice for Palestinians, for Jews, and for everyone who lives in the Middle East. Legally barred from embarking on the educational and philosophical journey I went through. This process of self-reflection, study, and learning is at the very core of what it means to be Jewish. And we will not allow the Brandeis Center or this court to decide for us what we can discuss debate or protest. They don't get to decide what being Jewish means. The outcome of this suit will not only impact Berkeley Law School, the impact will be national. We must be admitted as interveners in this case because someone who represents and stands for the victory of the Palestinian people must be in that courtroom. We must be admitted into this case because someone must say the truth that fighting, the gen fighting against the genocide and ethnic cleansing perpetrated by the Netanyahu and Biden governments is not anti-Semitic. Standing against those things is not anti-Semitic. The plaintiffs and defendants agree that our freedom of speech must be restricted, our organizations must be sanctioned, our aspirations for peace and equality must be denied. The proposed interveners are the only ones who can defend the free speech rights and academic freedom of everyone who stands against the ongoing genocide. For me, being Jewish means standing up for true equality and justice at all times, no matter how uncomfortable it is. The Brandeis Center wants to impose on all Jews a single viewpoint as to what it means to be a Zionist and a Jew. According to the plaintiffs, anything that opposes their fanatical worldview should be considered anti-Semitic. It's clear from their actions that the UC defendants, in particular Berkeley Law School Dean Chemerinsky, agree that anti-Zionism equates to anti-Semitism and its proponents should be silenced. It was the UC as I said earlier, it was the UC administration who brutally
broke up the, UC, the UCLA encampment and broke up encampments across the state on other UC campuses. It's clear that they have no problem censoring and attacking our rights while they bend over backwards to defend the rights of those who support genocide. It's only the anti-war movement itself, the students, and the Jewish community that can answer the lies of the Brandeis Center. Fighting for Palestine is not anti-Semitic. Not all Jews are Zionist, and few adhere to the extremist positions of these plaintiffs. We, if we are admitted into this case, we will be the only ones capable of speaking these plain truths. And I just want to say what we intend to do moving forward from here. We intend to build a statewide and national movement around this case to defend the rights of the movement for Palestine and to defend Jewish students and Jewish advocates' rights to decide for ourselves what Judaism and Zionism mean. And that means we'll be speaking at college campuses, high schools, unions, churches, synagogues, mosques, anywhere that we will be invited to speak on this case and build this movement, we will more than happily go. So as a last final thing, I just want to put the call out to Judge Donato. You cannot run. You cannot hide from the truth. You must admit us and the other interveners into this case immediately. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Peace be upon you all. My name is Zaid Youssef, Z-A-I-D-Y-O-U-S-E-F. I'm a Palestinian American. I'm the president of the Muslim Student Association here at Berkeley, and I am a second year law student at Berkeley Law School. I speak here today because for the last 10 months, I've witnessed my people massacred. Prior to October 7, my family has lived under military occupation in the West Bank, where they are subject to dear, daily incursions daily searches, daily checkpoints, daily humiliation, and daily killings, even prior to October 7. This lawsuit by the Brandy Center aims to make the statements of these very facts that my family faces anti-Semitism. It strives to make these lived realities that are live streamed to our phones and the horror that we witnessed in Gaza, anti-Semitism. It is in fact anti-Semitism of the highest order to equate the Zionist terrorist regime that has killed tens of thousands with the religion of Judaism. Mm -hmm. It is for that reason that we stand here today saying that we trust neither the Brandy Center nor the UC administration to protect our rights. I served on the board of the Muslim Student Association last year and we saw of the ugliest, most Islamophobic filled years that we have ever experienced as students. We witnessed speakers come to campus declaring that two billion Muslim lives are worth less than an animal. When Chancellor Christ, the former Chancellor of UC Berkeley, was prompted to condemn Islamophobia in the context of this remark, she refused to and ended the meeting with a representative of the Muslim students. When Muslim students organized prayers, we were wet with harassment at these very steps, with people interrupting our weekly Friday prayers, calling us terrorists, telling us to go to Gaza, telling us that we deserve the genocide and they deserve the killing. I have witnessed personally hate speech after hate speech directed at us through our social media channels. One person telling us that he'll donate 10 cents to the Muslims for every child killed in Gaza. And to add to all of this, I have personal experiences with Dean Erwin Chemrinsky in his refusal to humanize Palestinians. In an email exchange that is mentioned in this motion, we see Dean Erwin Chemrinsky refuse to acknowledge Palestinian casualties, refuse to even mention the word Gaza, Palestine, Middle East, anything to indicate any casualties besides Israelis. And in a private email exchange, he admits that he wished, in retrospect, he had mentioned us. In a following exchange at a town hall on October 11th, I confronted Dean Chemerinsky personally and asked him why, when the casualties of Palestinians had exceeded Israeli casualties, he had yet to make a single statement about our lives. After a heated back and forth, his answer was simply, I choose what goes in the statements, and I won't release a statement for what you're asking for. Dean Erwin Chemerinsky is openly a genocide denier. This is not a slur, this is not a opinion, this is simply a statement of fact. Earlier in the spring semester, Dean Chemerinsky in a podcast openly denied any genocide going on in Gaza. Dean Chemerinsky claims to be a neutral third party who serves the interests of his students, but anyone who looks at his track record sees constant anti-Muslim sentiment, constant anti-Palestinian sentiment, and constant genocide denial. 
I do not trust a man who denies genocide and denies the massacre of 40,000 of my people to defend my free speech. I do not trust an administration that has allowed Islamophobia to go unanswered for on this campus to stand for Palestinians. And I most certainly do not trust a dean whose wife assaulted a hijabi student in his own backyard to stand for my freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. It is for these very reasons that we must be allowed to intervene in this lawsuit. We are caught between two parties where their only true dispute is about how to suppress Palestinians in the most efficient way and the most PR friendly way and the most presentable way for the media. We are on a campus where they pride themselves on being the home of the free speech movement, but apparently that free speech does not extend to Palestinians. It only extends to people who they're able to market in a beautiful way, and they're able to make comfortably placed on the front page of this university's website. So with that, I end on this one sentiment, which is if we are not allowed to intervene, then the chilling effect this lawsuit will have not just on Berkeley, not on just the UC system, not just the state of California, but the entire United States will not be just faced by the Palestinians alone. Palestinians are the first of many to come who will be silenced using these tactics. And if we don't stand up today and put an end to this and stand for the First Amendment, then be rest assured that the groups that are following are going to be much more and much more easier to target. Palestinians truly stand as the doorway between suppression of students that stand for any cause. And if Palestinians fall today, and if that door is open, rest assured that we will not be the only ones facing these issues. And so with that, I again reiterate our request and our demand to be allowed to intervene in this lawsuit. Thank you all and free Palestine. Hi, my name is Muki. Uh, I'm a Berkeley 3L. I'm here um, as myself, as an Israeli American Jew, and on behalf of uh, Berkeley Law Jews for Palestine. Um, we want to join this intervention because it's the Brandeis Center is saying that Berkeley is anti-Semitic. And the dean is responding saying, I am doing all I can to stop it. But what the dean is not saying, and what he does when he speaks on behalf of Jews for the campus, is pretend that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism and that Jews have one united voice. In the past, he's shut down journals who try to pass a bylaw um, in support of uh, Palestinian voices. Um, he's actually, today, I believe, was the deadline about whether to file with him now because they are now checking every journal's bylaws. Um, and today was the day needed that journals needed to turn in their bylaws by so that he could tell whether or not they violated his code of conduct. The dean in the past has threatened to decertify journals, and he continues to for passing a pro-Palestinian bylaw. He has threatened to protect pro-Palestinian students, and when I personally talked to him and emailed him about it, he has deflected, changed the subject, and said it's all he can do. Yet, he does so much more to protect the interests of Zionists on campus and Zionist voices, um, even when they're not actively threatened, like pro-Palestinian activists are. When students are being doxxed, he says, that's a third party truck. I don't know what to do about that. On public streets, there's nothing I can do. Um, but when a journal thinks that it might not publish or invite to speak pro-Zionist speakers, suddenly it becomes the whole university's problem. Chemerinsky does not speak for Jewish students. The protests were not an anti-Semitic protest. It was an anti-Zionist protest. And that is very different as an anti-imperialist movement. It is not an anti-Jewish movement. Myself as a Jew was part of that movement. I know other Jews who were part of it. I'm not, it, 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 to call me anti-Semitic for speaking about myself would be anti-Semitic. To, Israel does not represent all Jews in the world and in trying to do so, it simplifies our own identities. Um, and erases a lot of Jewish identities and language, frankly. Um, 
it's it's unacceptable that this singular Zionist Jewish viewpoint is the only representation in this lawsuit. There's no reason that the university has for not including students as a response to a lawsuit about a student movement. We need to be heard in this lawsuit. And as an anti-Zionist Jewish Israeli, my voice deserves to be here too. And the Dean won't tell you that people like me exist. And that's, that's why we need, we need our say in this moment. Um, yeah, thank you very much. My name is Muki. Um, I use they, them pronouns. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Benjamin Lynch. Um, I am a researcher at the, at the Department of Earth, Planetary, and Space Sciences at UCLA. Um, before that, I was a researcher up at the Space Sciences Lab here at Berkeley um, for basically since 2006. Um, I have been on the receiving end of a number of police batons defending free speech on this campus right there during Occupy. Um, this is about hostile campus climate. We need to be part of this lawsuit because the policies being put forward by this administration is creating a hostile campus climate for us. I mean, how am I supposed to do academic research and be part of the intellectual academic life of this university if the subject of that is just like the like UC has decided to censor any and all truth about what's happening to Palestinians. I mean, how could you like the thing that they just passed on no no UC website can host anything, you know, supposedly critical of the state of Israel, that means if you were if you were doing research on the Middle East and you happened to write an academic paper where you interviewed some Palestinian students or someone that lived there or someone that's been affected by this war, like you couldn't put that on your website, on your CV, because the title might have something like Palestinians are human beings and are fully equal and should be treated fully equally in this society. Like, how could you not say that? And this thing about intervening around the law school journals, like this is an academic freedom question. I mean, so what? So environmental scientists are not allowed to question the role of oil companies in global warming? I mean, that's where we're headed. If you're gonna just shut off any academic viewpoint, which requires debate, free thinking, is kind of contentious, but just like Adam was talking about, that is the learning process. That's why we're all here at the UC system, because this is supposed to be an entity of higher learning where people can figure out how to relate to this world and how to move forward and how to make sure that this is the kind of world we want to live in and be part of. And I'm supposed to bring in a whole bunch of research money into this university. That's my job. I'm a scientist, but really, I write grants. The university takes 50% overhead from all of those grants. I'm supposed to say that UC is like the place the federal government should be spending its money to do research? Well, not a, not a poor silence. I mean, not if I can't walk to my office without walking past lines of riot cops just harassing crap out of a bunch of students sitting on the grass saying, hey, I don't think we should be murdering children. You ought to be able to say that on a college campus. So that's why we're intervening in this suit. Because I don't believe that the UC, UCLA administration, that the UC Berkeley administration, that President Drake, they're not gonna say the truth about what's happening. They're not gonna fight for the equality that the students on their campuses demand. We are. So that's why we're gonna be part of this lawsuit. Thanks for the Brandeis Center seeks to silence criticism of the state of Israel's genocidal conquest of, the, of Gaza, West Bank, and East Jerusalem, and the U.S. government's 
support of Israel. And they are doing that through the false claim that criticism of this ultra-right-wing government in Israel is anti-Semitic. That's a lie. It's not true. And our group includes Muslims and Jews and people of diverse groups who are saying absolutely not. It is not anti-Semitic. In fact, the, uh, opposing this genocide is is our duty uh, to defend the human rights of all people on all sides of the conflict. And it is um, it would be a great threat to freedom of speech in the home of the free speech movement and to academic freedom, as well as to religious freedom, because they also seem to define for Jews what's central to Judaism, which is an absurd thing to do and an extreme thing to ask the Jewish courts to do for the purpose of silencing pro-Palestine the voices by both non-Jews and Jews. And we would be the only voice that's already being proven clear by the university's actions, including their announcement today, uh, claim, uh, saying that they'll have zero tolerance for peaceful encampments for Palestine. We are the only voice that is going to speak the truth uh, about the uh, about what's going on in Israel and Palestine. Well, actually, I do want to talk about that one point. So, yes, the university did come out and say that there was going to be new stipulations for how people are allowed to protest here. And on the other side of it, there are some Jewish students, maybe not the ones that you're involved, that think that maybe this is a good thing because they were worried last year because of those protests and saying that they were in danger. How do you respond to those claims? Well, what, what we saw in the spring, especially with the crackdown at UCLA, was the entire campus was threatened with violence because the police, the, the university administration, uh, created a police crackdown that openly worked with pro-fascist Zionists to beat peaceful students and send dozens of people to the hospital. And faculty and students have all roundly condemned the University of California administration for the, the hostile atmosphere and the, the violence that they fomented. These, uh, what Blake has announced is an unprecedented policy. There hasn't been an announcement like this and a, an announcement of a crackdown this big since the McCarthyist era. It's an untenable, uh, dramatic policy that would prohibit encampments that have been normal operations uh, of these campuses since the 1964 free speech movement. It's not going to stand. And we think that President Drake needs to resign immediately and follow the footsteps of Columbia President Shafiq, who similarly tried to implement a zero tolerance of policy and fails spectacularly because it was so outrageous and extreme. All right, so is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, no, just that Judge James Donato uh, needs to admit us and allow us to be interveners because uh, this, Brandeis is forum shopping and filing lawsuits across the country, including against Harvard. Admitting us as interveners allows this case to be the one that has the most extensive and fulsome record about the nature of the struggle in Israel-Palestine that has diverse viewpoints of Muslims and Jews and pro-Palestinian activists in it. And we'll make this the one that's the binding precedent for the country. He needs to allow us to have our voice in the case so that there is a, a full hearing on the important and cherished rights that are at stake and in danger with this lawsuit. All right.